everybody, this is Unrested. I'm obviously here with Bradley. He's staying over at my house because, as you probably all may know, Tokyo had quite a big meltdown. And I don't mean in the way of a nuclear disaster, which the news falsely reported over in America, as you all know. Um, Wait, but what? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The news in America, not so good. Not so oh, good. Okay. What's your, your personal opinion, good? Good news? It sucked. Yeah, it, it was pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Glenn Beck, fuck you. All right, yeah. seriously, die a thousand deaths. That's about all I can say to you. Yeah. Anyway, um, this is pretty much a J-Fact to give you an update on what exactly the situation is. In Osaka, we're about 400 miles from the epicenter of the quake. So we really didn't deal with anything other than an aftershock that shook my school that I work at for about a good seven minutes. Otherwise, totally okay, and by say sh when I say shaking, I just mean like the lights moving around a little bit, maybe a book or two fall off the shelf. Nobody's getting injured at my place, okay? Osaka's totally fine. Some people sent me all kinds of emails, is there anything I can do to help? Can I send money or anything like that? No, I'm totally okay. I appreciate all your concern. If you want to help out at all, my advice to you is donate money to the Japanese Red Cross. I say Japanese Red Cross because the American Red Cross is only going to spend one-third of your donations on actually helping people, the rest are going to pocket, the Japanese Red Cross will actually put that towards helping people here. What a novelty. So, I have Rodri here. He's actually staying over. He's taking a little bit of a break from the chaos in Tokyo. So I thought we'd just take a moment here to just ask him some questions since he's actually from yeah. the area where a lot of this went down. So, what exactly, what did you experience right when the earthquake hit? Can you give us just kind of a rundown? Well, have you ever been inside of a microwave and like things were swaying back and forth? That's kind of like what it was. In a, yeah. mi a microwave? <laughs> yeah. Was it hot? I mean, it wasn't hot. It was just everything was moving like this. You know. Oh, okay. Like, I was in the Combini actually when this happened, and I was watching the Coca-Cola move from like one direction to the other. And I'm like, wow, that's a pretty big earthquake. And so I just <laughs> when the water actually like when you saw like the liquid moving in there and stuff, was yeah. it almost like? And I don't mean to make this like a funny example or anything, just this is the only thing I, the first thing I thought of off the top of my head is like Jurassic Park when the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, it was Jurassic Rex. Park 5. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> when like um, the, the Tyrannosaurus Rex is coming, you just seeing like that water bounce up and down? Was it no, no, like no, that? it was like, it was just like moving like that. Swaying back and forth. Swaying back and forth. Almost like one of those old ocean machines. Yeah, like ah, one ocean machine. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, but I've never seen a whole city move before. That was but the first. In your place, I mean, for us, we just had like a little bit of tremors and stuff shaking a little bit around. Stuff was like actually falling off of shelves. Yeah, like, like uh, the the books, the, the library, like all the books are everywhere. It's like they literally shook everything. <laughs> I'm just glad I'm not the one cleaning that up. That's all I can say. What about how far away were you from the actual tsunami that hit afterwards? What is it? I guess that's like that's up in Sendai. That's like a good. 300 kilometers? Okay. What, what is that, miles? I'm, I'm not 300 sure. kilometers and miles. Uh, I don't know. It's pretty far. So we're all fine here. Well, that's good. It's But what about, what would you say, like, how's your apartment building itself? Oh, it's, it's crap. Is <laughs> it's it about at, ready to fall it's apart. It's about ready to fall yeah, apart. Yeah, I'm, I'm about ready to leave. So you're yeah. going to leave as soon as you get back? Yeah, okay. probably put in my month's notice. So as and you guys off. can tell, a little more damage compared to what we were used to here. Uh, we're perfectly fine. Osaka had nothing to worry about. Our water is fine. You can still drink the water here. They're having some problems up in Tokyo, as I'm sure you may have heard. It's dangerous for children under two to drink the water due to radioactivity. Some of the vegetation and things like that around there are a little bit messed up from... Uh, it's the, like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes up there. I'm not joking. Well, okay, no. So what about, like, now, the state of Fukushima, the actual yeah. reactor, what, what's the state as of right now? Well, um, what we know from the news, please don't watch the Western media, but, I mean, you can watch them, not like getting on your ass about it because, you know, you shouldn't be watching, but what I'm saying is, is that they're blowing a lot of things out of proportion about it, and they're saying that, like, all there's radiation in the air, and, and there's, like, all these problems, I guess, and they say that Americans can't be, like, 50 kilometers from it. it yeah. Honestly, guys... <laughs> Almost everything you're hearing in Western news is total BS, and it's way overblown. I'm reading Australian newspapers, and I'm reading American newspapers, and uh, websites, and watching the news, and it is total BS. I remember actually reading one headline, and this was in an Australian newspaper, and it said, Tokyo, 
nuclear meltdown ghost town. Okay, so number one, there hasn't been any kind of meltdown at all. There has been no nuclear meltdown. The reactor never melted down. They got uh, new cables hooked up to the cooling units that actually keep this uh, reactor from exploding or you know reaching a critical state. On top of it, they compared it to Chernobyl. Chernobyl was a totally different type of nuclear reactor. This is a boiling water reactor, which you might want to actually look up uh, Western media before you go ahead and try and quote this as being the Chernobyl of Japan. Okay. Well, they say it's like Three Mile Island. Yeah, Three Mile Island. That's yeah, a little better. I mean, that's a little better a comparison, better. but <laughs> it's it's nothing like the Chernobyl reactor. That was the thing that really pissed me off. And uh, honestly, I saw some really horrible stuff in the German news too. Some one paper out in Germany was saying that the whole thing was a hoax. Well. I can tell you 100% that it was no hoax. I mean, obviously, Bradley's yeah. here for the fact that it was not. It changed my life. <laughs> it, I wouldn't it be intense. here today if it wasn't for that. So, I mean, I literally had my parents like throw money into my account and say, "Just get out of Tokyo," you know, because I'm mean, people are people are leaving like the foreigners, especially, are leaving in mass numbers. It's incredible. Yeah, one thing you may have heard of, unfortunately, Gaijin, as we are known are now being given the name of Flygen. Flygen, yeah. as in flying out of here as soon as any kind of trouble happens. My personal opinion, okay, uh, I've been in natural disaster before. I was there for Katrina back in Florida when I lived there, so I have dealt with natural disaster personally. Um, to up and run in the face of danger in a country that's given you a job, given you a place to stay, and I'm saying for those yeah. of us who work here or go to school here or whatever, um, I really... Personally, my, my personal opinion, not the right thing to do. Um, why run from the country that just gave you a great job, gave you a place to live? Why not? This is the time yeah. to stay and help, right? Yeah. And another thing, too, is, is that the Obama administration actually sent a, a notice like saying they, they consider all Americans to come home from the embassy. And my opinion is, it's like, okay, yes, I'll just drop everything I'm doing and come home, you know, because I just do that every day. Well, right? Yeah, right? Well, some of us have uh, <laughs> families here. Yeah. Uh, hi, yeah, yeah, I'm actually like married and have a kid here in Japan, yeah. so I'm not about to just drop yeah. everything and head back home. I think it was, uh, who was it, Tokyo Sam that said it best. He said, to all you gaijin who suddenly dropped everything and left your girlfriends and your contracts at work, they're in good hands now. Anyway, this is Radri and Unrested yeah. signing out. As I said before, if you want to do anything to help, donate money to the Red Cross yes. in Japan. Okay, don't worry about the American one. Other than that, peace out, everybody stay safe, and I'll see you next time on JFAC. Rad Riega Kantoku. Peace. Out. That was good. Yeah, some